Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today I would like to color out of Jade Summers Color by Number Patterns book. Can't believe I have not colored out of this book yet. And this is on my list of 10 books to complete this year. Don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> We're already almost to the end of April. And I haven't colored out of it yet. And there's a lot of pictures in here. So yeah, this one is not going to get finished. <laughs> but I definitely want to color more out of here. So I picked this one out for us to color out of. And I am going to color with, now well, let's leave it over here, my 180 set of Cali Art markers. I have not colored with my Cali Art markers in a while. So I thought, mm, let's show them some love. Put our blotter page in the back. Now, of course, I already picked out my colors. <laughs> Gotta do that. Otherwise, it takes too long to uh, figure out colors on camera. So I'm just going to start in the middle. We have number two. They do, if you're not familiar with this book, they do have their color chart on the back. What number corresponds to what color. And then they always list the colors over here. So you can match them up ahead of time if you would like. To me, that is just easier to do. So we have number two and four, which is light yellow and dark yellow. So I picked out Y003 and number four is Y314. Okay, so let's start there. I will go ahead and link this book as well as um, the Cali Art Markers. Um, again, if you're not familiar with Cali Art Markers, and these are alcohol markers, they come in a lot of different size sets. This is the largest one. It is 180 markers. Um, and I do have my color chart created for them. That's how I picked out my colors. Um, but they do have like a 100 set and they have smaller sets in that. I'll link um, a number of the different sets down below if you'd like to check them out. They do have the chisel tip and a fine tip. And they do have the little knobbies to prevent them from rolling because they are completely round. To me, I hate these little knobbies because <laughs> it makes them so hard to get out of a marker case or because this set is so large, it doesn't fit. There's not a large enough marker case. So I have them in this other type of a case, um, an art bin case with marker inserts. I am gonna record a video at some time showing how I store all of my large marker sets because I have like four or five now of the really large marker sets, including like the Cali Arts, um, my Ohuhu brush, the, um, let's see, my Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers and my Copics, uh, things like that. And I store them in a couple of different types of cases. So I'm going to do a, a video showing that if anybody would be interested. Um, so with all that being said, let's start coloring. So I'm going to zoom you in a little. Who all has this book and have you colored much out of it? You know me and my patterns. And I am just going to color with the fine tip. You know me, I am not a chisel tip gal. I love coloring with fine tips and especially brush tips. So I do have a new set of brush tip markers that I've been working on swatching and creating a color chart. There's actually a set of three. I have those color charts figured out. I just haven't completed the final one. And then I'm going to do a combined color chart, combining all three together, because there is a skin tone set also. But that in total has um, over 200 colors. So. 
working on that uh, video for you guys too. And that's why I have some ink on my finger because oh, the caps on those markers are so hard to get off. They are brush tip and chisel. And wow, the brush end wasn't quite as hard as the chisel, but when I was doing my swatching, I wanted to use the chisel for a change. And holy cow, yeah, it's pretty difficult. I can tell as I'm swatching and, and uncapping them, they are getting a little looser, but boy, oh boy, in the beginning, whew. So, you know, I'm really pulling on the caps and yeah, let me get some ink on me. So no, I'm not bleeding. <laughs> Washed it off as best I could, but yeah, now that's the nature of alcohol markers. So these colors don't exactly match the back cover, but they don't have to. You just get a light yellow, dark yellow, you know, totally open to interpretation. Now looks like I will need these colors again as long as I have them out. We have some twos here. So we'll just color this in and talk until I don't have anything more to talk about. <laughs> Not sure how long that will be. How is everybody doing? I'm doing pretty well. The household is all healthy and nothing too much going on here. Not now anymore anyways. Been super busy this week and that's why kind of the lack of videos. I still try to get, you know, something up every day for you guys, but... A lot of it was like some shorter flip through videos. So that's why, because I was extremely busy. And what I was busy with was a rummage sale or garage sale as some people call it. Cause my daughter, Heather has a ton of baby clothes to sell, or had. No, no I should say has, because <laughs> she still has a ton of baby clothes left, even though she sold a ton of them. Yeah, she still has so many left. She <laughs> had so many and used up so many of the tables for that, she didn't really have room left to put out much of the adult clothing she wanted to sell and there wasn't much room left for me thank heavens i really didn't have much to get rid of because as you all know unless you're a new subscriber we moved into this house last october so yeah really got rid of a lot of stuff last fall i donated so much to goodwill oh my gosh we had the van full and a trailer all of my dress work clothes and matching shoes because of course you know always got to match <laughs> so yeah i had so much to donate it was unreal all right we got 18s and 19s. Medium blue and dark blue. So 18, I have B114. Let me put these two back so I don't have a whole ton to put back later. And I'm sure I probably missed some. I'll have to get them out again anyhow. <laughs> but 18, I have as B114. B114. No, that's 411. The dyslexic part of me sometimes has problems with that. And 19 is dark blue, B027. There we go. All right, so medium blue. 
So yes, very busy with the room on sale because I, you know, only had my few things to mark, you know, price and get out. But I helped her with everything. And of course, you know, it was at my house. So I had to clean out of the garage. Not that it was dirty, you know, and stuff, but I had to move a whole bunch of stuff outside <laughs> in order to set up all the tables. I have eight six foot tables, folding tables, that we always use for the rummage sale. Um, and yeah, it takes up pretty much the entire garage for the most part. I mean, there's still room. We had a couple card tables set up. And, but yeah, I had to move the, you know, the garbage dumpsters out, the cars, all the miscellaneous things, lawnmowers, and still had the snowblower out too because, you know, it is still April. You never know in Wisconsin. <laughs> Mother Nature, I always say, is fickle in spring and summer. Or spring and summer. Well, that too, but <laughs> spring and fall. 19. Dark blue. But, yes, overall it was a huge success. And we have it so early in the year because Marathon, where I live has this annual garage sale and it is citywide. So this year there were almost 100 houses that was in the citywide room and sales. Not that I live in a big city, but it's a village. But so for us, 100 houses is a lot. Um, and by, you know, participating in the citywide Roman sales, people come from all over for any of these communities around here that hold the, the citywide type of garage sales. Marathon always has to be the first one. I don't know why. It's usually, always has been the last weekend in April, and I'm not sure why they did it. A week early this year but froze my tushy off out there oh my gosh it was so cold it's been worse other years I mean we didn't have snow <laughs> like we have other years matter of fact when I was at my other place one year it got because I have a longer very steep driveway over there and it was snowing and had like grapple, you know, that kind of ball -y type of stuff. And my driveway was getting so slippery. I was so afraid somebody was going to get hurt. I was out there spreading uh, ice melt. And, oh, it was awful. Either that or we'll get rain. This year we did not. Only at night. And then the morning of, yesterday morning, Saturday morning, got a little bit. It was downpouring for a while, of course. But other than that, the weather itself was okay. It was just really cold. And 17 is light blue, B003. So, yes, my hands are chapped. I've been putting hand lotion on, which I normally am not real good about doing. I should because my skin is so dry and I just don't think of putting hand lotion on. And that's why my cuticles and stuff are usually so horrible. But yeah, my skin was just calling out for hand lotion, you know, along with, you know, washing your hands so often. And my hands really need the hand lotion and like I said I always forget to put hand lotion on I don't know how because I keep it on the uh, window sill right above the sink kitchen sink where I wash my hands because that's where I have the antibacterial soap you would think Lisa would remember to put it on but no oh that's looking pretty huh and then number 22 is medium purple. 
that I have is R926. So, yes, overall, that room would sell. I only made like a hundred bucks, but like I said, I didn't have much out there. Heather, on the other hand, with all of her baby clothes, and they were selling a dryer and stuff. So she had some, you know, bigger ticket items, but she made over a thousand dollars. It's like, wow. Well, plus she is a distributor for Epicure. I don't know if you have ever heard of Epicure, but it's uh, along the food line. It's all these really nummy spices and mixes and, and she did really well with that too and that was over and above the thousand dollars so she did very well that table is still set up out there so my grandson gets to pick out some epicure because he loves to cook so my daughter said that he can pick out $20 worth of Epicure. If anybody is ever interested, commercial time, um, and want to check it out, let me know. I can uh, give you her Facebook page this next, it, this next week, I think. She's holding, hosting some giveaways, giving away some products. And they also have silicone, really nice um, bakeware, too. Pretty. Now, of course, this is a mandala, so I'm going to be flipping the book around on you. Sorry if I'm getting anybody dizzy. I'm assuming you're probably doing your own thing. I don't think too many people sit and watch me actually color. Heavens, I hope not. <laughs> Usually I am coloring or I'm diamond painting. Working on something anyhow while I listen to color and chats. That's why they're my absolute favorite type of color tube video. Love them, love them, love them. I'm always so happy when I see somebody come out with a new color in chat. <laughs> so, yes, the Roma chair was very, very busy. Let's go back to our medium blue, which is the 114. And, uh, yeah, kept, kept me hopping. And on top of that... On Saturday, well, Friday night, Heather's kids both were sick. They were both throwing up, running low-grade fevers. I mean, it was nothing too serious. But, you know, had the diarrhea and all of that. So, you know, typically I was watching the kids inside. I would sit outside for the room sale for a little bit and, and handle things. But then she would, seeing it was mostly her stuff. And then I would be inside watching the kids. Well, with those, you know, with them both being sick, she didn't want to bring them down. So I did the room sale all by myself Saturday. And yes, my fingers were so cold. I was cuddled up in my big winter coat. <laughs> had a blanket on my lap to cover my legs. Had my thick, warm socks on. My feet were still freezing. <laughs> oh, it was awful. So I wish they would have their Roman sales later, but I think they like to be the very first citywide Roman sale because I think next weekend or the weekend after is the next uh, town over called Edgar I believe is theirs always there typically the week after us but because we were a week early it's probably two weeks but yeah they really start the Roman sales early and I think with being the very first one 
people really come to ours because they're looking for, you know, summer clothes for their kids, you know, play clothes where it doesn't have to be new stuff. Although some of the clothes at these women's sales look like brand new, but you get them for, you know, such a good price. Especially at some of the women's sales. Now, like Heather, she really had hers priced to sell. Um, rather than labeling each piece of clothing, she did a little bit different this year, and it worked out really well for her. And that is, you know, shirts were 50 cents, pants were a buck, jammies were a buck and a half, and outfits were two bucks, things like that. And so it was, you know, much easier to figure out. And, yeah, I mean, you can't beat that, especially when you get into the bigger sizes like Maddie's. She had so many cute jeans and stuff like that and a nice pair of kids' jeans for a dollar. You know, when they're not wore out yet and because in like little Levi's clothes, they're not in them very long, especially newborn clothes. They're like brand new and, you, you know, get a pair of pants or an outfit, sleepers, for a buck or two, can't beat it. Especially when you know they're going to be outside playing this summer and you don't want to put brand new clothes on a kid who's going to get filthy dirty and stained and get holes in their clothes. <laughs> You know, all the stuff the kids do. Am I right, parents and grandparents? So, yeah. Heather always puts her kids in such nice clothes when she brings them here. And I'm like, I hope you put older clothes on them this summer. Because, you know, we're outside in the yard by the swing set and stuff. And they're going to get dirty. I felt so bad one day when Heather brought him here. Levi had on brand new, really cute little tennies. And that's when we had that really beautiful, warm weather a few weeks ago where we were in the upper 70s and then hit 81 the next day. Mother Nature's so mean by teasing us like that. I'm just going to continue on with the 18s here. You know, because then she brings us this snow and stuff. <laughs> oh, when I opened up the rummage sale on, was it Thursday morning? Because that was the first day. It was 17 degrees here. Oh, that <laughs> was cold. So, yeah. So, yeah. They definitely need older play clothes. Older tannies. Because he had gotten those tinnies dirty then down there. And so I felt bad. I tried washing them up. And it was so cute. We had a number of people bring their little doggies through. There were a couple of little puppies that came through. And one woman was pushing her. Gosh, how old was it? A 10-week-old? Golden. I think it was Golden Retriever, not a Golden Lab. And it was just sitting there in that baby stroller. <laughs> so nice. And we, me and my grandson, Connor, were out there and we both pet this this adorable little puppy. And so silky soft. Oh, it was so cute. And another woman brought through a Bichon puppy. Oh my gosh. Was that thing adorable? So well behaved. She had that one on a leash, not in a stroller. But, uh, yeah, just the nicest little dog. And you meet the nicest people at these warm and sales. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you have your, your few that are, you know, a little crass or a little short with you. But for the most part... You really meet some very nice, very interesting people. <laughs> Most are very friendly. And then, of course, all the kids have got to come look at all the toys because you always have a lot of toys at these women's sales, too. 
So when you bring kids along to a rummage sale, just like when you bring them along to the grocery store, yeah, you always end up spending a lot more than what you plan on. Unless you're very strong with them. And uh, I know I never was. It's like, okay, fine. Or you can pick out one thing. That's what most of them did. Okay, you can get one thing. Or like what Heather did with Maddie. Because they went around rummage sailing on Thursday for a while to get Madison some summer clothes. And then she had $20 saved up so she could get whatever she wanted with that $20. So, yeah, she got a, a few toys. So that's kind of kind of neat for kids when they have their own money. Teaches them responsibility. You know, I can't spend it all at the first room. and say, oh, you're not going to have any money left. So I think it's great when parents do that. You know, give your kids an allowance and, uh, you know, let them spend it as they want. But you spend it all on foolish stuff, then when you see something you really, really want, you're not going to have the money for it. So I think it's great life lessons. I always try to do that with my kids, too. You know, you give them an allowance where... You know, doing dishes and cleaning and litter box or whatever you happen to have for them to do. And then, yeah, you give them their weekly allowance. And they get to decide what to do with their money. Cameron was always so good, and he still is. Um, even as a child, he was great at saving money. And he still does that. So good that him and his wife are along the same lines. They both are very thrifty <laughs> with their money. They are not spenders. And so, yeah, even as a child, Cameron was like that. Didn't spend it as soon as he got it, like a lot of kids do. He always was, he always managed to save up for a bigger purchase or something like that where yeah a lot of my other or some of my other kids a lot of my other kids makes me sound like I have a dozen right? <laughs> there's only four but you know some of them would uh, spend it on you know smaller things and that's how they had to learn well then when you want something bigger you don't have the money for it of course Sometimes mom would give in and, you know, if they were like $5 short or whatever, but, you know, then they had to do a few extra chores for that too. So in a sense, they were still paying for it. You know, you help me out extra and, you know, do the vacuuming, which you normally don't have to, or, you know, something like that. Scrub the stove. <laughs> Things they normally would hate to do. Clean your room. Well, that was typically one of their normal chores. Not that it always got done, but... Can't expect kids' bedrooms to be spotless. You just can't, right? I was never super strict about that one. Because I know growing up, my bedroom was not perfect. Well, first of all, growing up, there were six in our family, six kids, and I had to share a bedroom with two of my sisters, so there were three of us in that bedroom, and yeah, it was never clean, <laughs> and then every once in a while, we would just get it in our heads, we'd go on a cleaning spree, and we'd just go through everything. And it would be so spotless and it would feel so good. But how long it stayed that way? Hmm. Yeah. But again, you know, you kind of learn. It feels so good to have something clean. And I guess that's kind of what I grew up with. My house is never spotless, but 
You know, when you have kids or grandkids around, I don't think that should be a priority. As long as your house is, you know, picked up and dishes are done and laundry's done, you know, things that have to be done, bathrooms are cleaned, and I don't think it has to be spotless. Okay, I'm just going to do this 18. I've been on this color for a while now. We'll go on to a different one. So yes, Roman sale was a success, but that is what took up Oh, a lot of my week getting ready for that. Today is Sunday, so I did not get my typical Saturday recording done. And then sometimes, well, a lot of times, I'd record the main amount of my videos on Saturday, but many times did not get them all done on a Saturday. So then I would have to continue recording on Sunday. So I'm not sure, again, like this past week, how many videos and what kind of content I'm going to have for you this week. I do have a few different types of videos that I am hoping to have up. I do hope to have this color and chat up yet tonight. Um seeing as how I didn't get it up yesterday, didn't get it recorded or anything, and I always like to have my color and chat up on the weekend. And then there's one, I guess you could call it a swatching video that I was so excited to do, and I really wanted to get it done yesterday. But by the time I was done with the room and sale, I was just so beat. It's like there is no way I can record I was so cold, I was cuddled up underneath the blankets, and Heather and her fiancé and the kids came back, because they were out by her dad's, my ex-husband, um, kind of celebrating a late Easter, and his birthday was this month also, so they were out there while I was handling the rummage sale again. We're going to go to 21, light purple. R913. Um, so then when they came back at like 6.30 or so, uh, you know, the room and sale was done, so they started packing everything up. And so I had to watch the kids again, so there was the rest of my snuggling up in a blanket and <laughs> warming up. So yeah, by the time they were done packing up and and left, it was getting quite late. And yeah, there was just no way I felt like setting everything up and recording last night. Now, with the Cali Arts, as you can see, purples and the blues look very, very similar. But it's what I had to work with. And typically when I color, I don't color with different sets. I color with one set and that's it. <laughs> I know I should. If I can't find the color in this set, I should get out another set and pick it from there, but oh well. We make do. So we'll use this purple for a while. I think that's looking pretty. Oh, I do want to mention I am so far behind on my comments on my videos. I apologize. Um, I am hoping now this week, as well as my emails, um, I know there are a number of you that have requested some color charts and things, and I have not gotten back to you yet, and I feel so bad. Um, I am hoping this week to get caught up on all of that. I'm probably a good couple weeks behind. I'm so sorry. But yeah, must get at that. 
because I love it when you guys comment on the videos. And I love going through and reading them. I have read the vast majority of the comments. I just haven't taken the time to respond back. So yeah, got to do that. How's the weather been by you guys? Has it been warm? We're supposed to warm up a little bit this next week. Into the 60s. Woohoo! I think the 60s. Let's see, where else are we going? Am I making you dizzy yet? <laughs> I'm so excited this Thursday. Yes, it's the little things in life. I have my dentist appointment to get my final, my permanent dentures. So, not that these weren't okay. They were called my immediate dentures, so when I had all my teeth pulled way back when, that was last September, they immediately put these immediate <laughs> dentures in to, um, you know, help stop the bleeding and whatnot. You leave them in overnight the first night. And, uh, you know, it was nice to at least, you know, have some dentures to be able to eat with before you get your permanent ones. I had one of you comment that you didn't get any temporary dentures and you had to wait because they typically like to wait six months at least before you get your permanent dentures. I cannot imagine going that long with no dentures. Wow. It was bad enough when, because my mouth was just so sore. Those, for a while, till I got the comfort liners put in, my mouth was so sore in the beginning. It just, so I was eating a lot of soft food. <laughs> Lost some weight. <laughs> That's not always a bad thing. But the wrong way of losing it, boy. So, yeah, I can imagine not having dentures the entire time. That would be awful. But, yeah, really looking forward to getting my my good ones. I got one of the higher line of dentures because they're supposed to be really nice and last longer. They have a longer warranty and... What a topic of conversation, huh? Dentures. Yeah. Hate them. I still hate them. <laughs> they are a pain in the butt. But if you have them, you got to make the most of it, right? All right. Let's go up here. That's about the only exciting thing going on in my life. <laughs> Pretty sad, huh? Woohoo, dentures. <laughs> yes, my life is quite boring, but that's okay. Hmm? Kind of like it that way. I am, like I've said in the past, I am just such a homebody. I don't like going anywhere. <laughs> I just like staying at home. Don't like getting ready to go anywhere. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. You know, Bob and I haven't gone out to eat now because of Corona. We used to go out every Saturday for supper. But now we just order the food and go pick it up. So we're eating out, but we're eating in. Does that make sense? I'm sure many people are doing that if you're used to eating out. Now, we do have restaurants here that are open. Um, 
But we've just gotten so used to ordering it, and one of us will run and get it. Usually Bob, because I'm recording on Saturday, so he'll I'll order it, and he'll run and get it. <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. I don't have a problem calling and ordering it if you're going to go run and get it. Because then I'll record a, a video while he's gone. Go and eat supper and then come back and record some more. Charge up my phone a little bit in the meantime. Don't like to record too late though because then it's so hard to get the videos uploaded that day yet because it's such a long process. As I've said in the past, you know, the recording is not the hard part. <laughs> not the part that takes the longest. It's everything else, all the steps you go through to get it uploaded. Now they're 21. Okay, let's let's do these thirteens in there. Thirteen is a light green G six o six. Oh yeah, that's another thing I have coming up. Not for a little bit yet, but had my, you know, haircut finally, professionally cut, not by me. Um, oh, boy, it must be like three weeks ago, maybe. And I typically color my own. Now, I haven't colored my hair in, pff, I don't know how long, probably last summer. <laughs> I don't typically color my hair too often, maybe every six months. <laughs> so it's pretty much all cut off by the time I dye them again. But I thought, I'm going to treat myself this time and I am going to have my hairstylist color my hair. Well, she is so backlogged for colors and perms as you can imagine that it took like a month and a half to get in for a color so but May 1st I have my color I'm excited because I'm going to have them I typically dye my hair like a, a red a, you know kind of a auburn but not real dark red but I'm going to go kind of with a more mm, on the lighter shade. And then I'm going to have like blonde highlights put in. Doesn't that sound pretty? <laughs> I can't wait. And we have 17, which is light blue. B003. Oh, sorry for my head in the way. Hope you didn't see my messy hair. They're a disaster. <laughs> Even with having it zoomed in, you seen my head. Yes, it is shower night tonight. Don't think I have to do laundry and I'll have to look. Uh -huh. That's one nice thing about, you know, being home all the time. Don't have all these work clothes and things to have to worry about washing and getting dry cleaned. And Just a stay-at-home person. Okay, we'll do some more 17s here. There's a lot of blues in this picture. I'm hoping they have more lighter colors in here, but it doesn't really look like it. 
Although this light blue is, is nice. Yeah, like I said, this is my first picture in here and I'm loving it, but it is definitely not going to get done. I don't know why I picked this book. There's a lot of pictures in it. I haven't colored in it. Boy. I've been working on some of my other books to finish this year. Right now I'm working on a spiral glyphics out of the Disney Villains book. Because that is on my list to complete this year too. And I did get one on my list done, the first one. So I'll be doing a flip of that. Not sure if I'm going to get that done this weekend, though. It may be waiting. I'm just not going to get to all my videos this weekend. But that's why I thought I would do this color and chat before I did all the flip through videos just so I'm sure that I got this one done because this of course is always my longest video unless it's swatching of a large set of something that can get to be a lengthy video too and that's why this uh, new marker set that I have been creating a color chart for I may split up because I don't think you guys want to sit through and watch me uh, swatch all of them together. Because <laughs> that would be like 200 and some markers. Well, little, little over 200. So I think I'm going to split them up by the sets that I received them in. Because there's a 80 set, a 90 set, and a skin tone set. So, oh gosh. That's right, thinking of that. I'd have to do that. I'm almost in the process of combining them all. I would have to record those videos then shortly. Hmm. Good thing I thought of that. Hmm. <laughs> I'll have to get them back out of the marker case. wanted to do that this next week but I guess I will hold off on making that completed combined color chart until I can record those individual videos unless you guys wouldn't mind a really long swatching video but I wanted to create the individual color charts too for you guys just in case anybody gets just one of the sets and would like the color chart for that particular set. I always just use the, you know, when I go through and combine all the sets together, yeah, not fun. That takes a long, long time to do. But then it's just so much easier when I want to color with them. And I don't have all these separate boxes of markers. I'm just going to have them all in one place. But I have to get another large case like this one <laughs> to put them all in. Too many videos to do. Not enough time. But as I've said in the past, it's always nice to have so many ideas for videos and not enough time than having no idea for videos. So being busy in that respect is a good thing. Let's see. It's not too bad outside today. At least the sun is kind of shining <laughs> a little here and there is it out now yeah a little bit but again we are supposed to warm up a little bit this week so I'm looking forward to that because Bob did get the 
lawn swing put together so that's out front now and uh, oh I love it I have sat out on it a number of times already don't like the fact that it's right out in the front yard so again I have said in the past I'm just a very self-conscious person I know people aren't looking at me, but yet in the back of my mind, I just, I feel like they are, so I'm self-conscious. You know, I'm right up by the street now, whereas before at my other house, I was in my nice, big, beautiful backyard where I was hidden from view. But yet I didn't want it down in the fenced-in area. I wanted something up here too and in the fenced in area I bought a uh, table and chair set you know for a patio set so that's going down there Bob has to put that together yet because I had true green come in last week to fertilize weed and feed the lawn if you can call this a lawn I don't think it's ever had <laughs> any help shall we say and it's oh gosh that yard down by the swing set where it's all fenced in yeah it's more dirt and a little bit of weeds than anything maybe there's a few blades of grass <laughs> but yeah it's in sad sad shape plus where we had the tree cut down we put some topsoil in there I have to seed that yet but Bob's going to have to bring the hose from the back of the house all the way around the front of the house because we don't have a water faucet outside in front and hopefully he'll be able to put one in out there he'll have to take the ceiling tile out downstairs because that's the finished part of the basement so because you got to water it twice a day when you first lay the seed down and believe you me I'm not hand carrying water out <laughs> and watering it that way <laughs> oh my gosh can you imagine because there's a few spots down there I'm going to seed plus some spots in the front yard because over the winter where Bella peed all the time I have bare spots now <laughs> so I want to do a little bit of seeding not not a lot but just a little bit out front also so we'll see I want to wait till it gets a little bit warmer anyhow it doesn't pay to put the grass seed out right now not until I know we're not going to get any snow do a little bit more of this light blue this is kind of a limited color palette isn't it but very pretty I like it So of course, as usual, <laughs> I will not get this done on camera. I still haven't finished that Jade Summer picture off camera. Bad girl. But I am going to get it finished before month's end so that I can include it in my what I colored for the month video at the end of the month. And then I will get this one done too before the end of the month. All right, we'll do this couple 17s yet. Kind of working more on this side and getting this side done. Especially I like the center of this, I think that's pretty. That's what's kind of neat about seeing these uh, color by number uh, patterns and designs is seeing what color palettes they pick. That was one of my favorite things about Sun Life Drawings color by number 
like mandalas and pattern books. They always put the most interesting colors together. Belva family, too. They're another one. So neat to, <clears throat> to see the colors that they put together. It's like, ooh, I really like that. Might have to use that. It's another video I really would like to, at some point in time, get together and show you is this new color combination. Not just palettes, but combinations um, system that a person came out with. Oh, so excited. I have not had a chance to work with it myself. Um, so, of course, I want to do that before I bring it to you guys. But it looks so neat. It was a download that you purchased on Etsy. And then I printed it all out. But I don't have it, um, like, in a binder or anything like that. I have not looked through it at all. 22 was our medium purple. That is R96. That's 826. Did I have that one out already? Hmm. I don't think I did. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah, that's the one that <laughs> looks more blue than purple. Okay. What was that again? 22. Okay. So we have 22s and 23s here. And 23 is the dark purple. So maybe we'll just do these and then we'll call it a color and chat. Call her a day. What time is it? Wow, is it four o'clock already? Holy cow. In a little while I'll have to Start making supper. I got a while yet though, so hopefully I'll be able to record a few videos yet. Making taco salad for supper. Oh yum, I love taco salad and we haven't had it in a long time. So I am looking forward to that. Am I on camera? I have not been glancing up the iPad near enough, so I hope <laughs> I have not been off screen. And I especially hope that my big old head hasn't been in <laughs> frame too often. Some of this I don't mind if it bleeds over too much, but when you got a dark color going around a light, like a pale yellow, yeah, I don't want that bleeding in. But no biggie if it does. It's just a picture. That's what I always tell myself, but myself doesn't always listen. The perfectionist in me oh, drives that person nuts. <laughs> Anybody else like that? It's like, oh, the picture is ruined. No, it's not. Just like I just recorded a video for lines, lines, dots, and spirals in there too. Don't worry if you don't stay completely within the lines. To me, that's literally impossible. In the grand scheme of things, you're not even going to see it. Because you kind of step back from the picture to see the picture when you're done coloring a lines, a dots, or a spirals picture. Like... The spiroglyphics picture I'm working on right now, you know, those lines are so thin and so faint and in some, you know, places so close together, it is so hard to not go out of the line sometimes, no matter how careful you are. And I always color those with my glitter gel pens, which for me, anyhow, 
um, I feel I have the most control over because I'm just so familiar with my gel pens. My still favorite coloring medium. Do love my markers too, though. And I think pencils are in last place only because they are the slowest coloring medium and I'm always in such a hurry. <laughs> Have to slow down, Elisa. All right, let's do this. But yet, when a person colors with pencils, like last week's when they colored out of Johanna Bassford with Prismas, it was so satisfying and it was looking so pretty. I still haven't gotten that back out to work on either. <laughs> Life has just gotten in the way of my coloring. Hate it when life gets busy like that. Jeez. All right. So let's do the 23. No, let's do the. No, that's 20. Okay. We'll do the 23, which is our dark purple R839. And that one I know I didn't do yet. Now, I'm sure I could have colored this much faster with the chisel tip, but in most of this, I probably would be able to have done in chisel just fine, except for things like this, going around where things are a little bit pickier, or like in the middle, you know, just, I don't know, you know. Things like this, or, you know, the fine tip or brush tip and stuff, you don't have to finagle and turn the tip around to get to the fine point or to, you know, color thicker. You just pull it out of the case and start coloring. You don't have to turn things around. <laughs> what a dumb reason, huh? I just find myself not going out of lines as much with these, with the fine tips. Plus, fine tips don't lay down quite as much color as a chisel. So, in my opinion, anyhow, they don't bleed quite as much as a chisel. And like a brush, when you're going in smaller areas so you're only coloring with the very tip it doesn't lay down quite as much color either so oh that's pretty I like that this is a really pretty dark purple love it as I was sitting out doing the rumage sale over the weekend. What day was it? Friday it must have been, yeah. Um, all of a sudden, a sign goes up in the neighbor's yard across the street. Here they're selling their house. <laughs> it's like, holy cow, we haven't even gotten to know you. <laughs> Never even met you. Is it something we said or didn't say? <laughs> Moving out because of us. No, I'm sure not. It's a younger couple that has just one, one little one. I've seen, I think it's a little boy, not much older than Levi, it looks like. Because I've seen the mom just twice last fall before it started getting nastier out. She took them for a stroller ride. And then when we had that really nice weather, I seen the dad pushing them outside in a swing out front. Um, but other than that, but yeah, they're moving. And my gosh, the people that they have had come looking at their house already. Holy cow. That first day, well, that was kind of late when the sign went up. But that night yet, yeah, shortly thereafter, they had a couple looking at it. And then all day Saturday, they were coming and going like crazy. 
today too there were a number of people that came to look at it I'm like holy cow took me how long to sell mine so of course curious Lisa as soon as I seen it go up for sale like oh my gosh I wonder if that's because a realtor is selling it you know with the sign and stuff so I couldn't see who the realtor was but so I figured it's got to be in a listing online so curious Lisa looks it up and it's a larger house it's like a tri-level there are only two bedrooms in that house I couldn't believe it like good heavens what is the rest of the space used for? And even after I got done looking at the pictures, I still am like, wow, <laughs> just looks like there should be more in that house. I'm going to do this 20 and these 16 so that we have this side done. So 20 is blue-purple, which is a real dark. Now, the color I picked out is not blue-purple, but if you look on the back... It's just a really super dark blue. So that's what I went with. Has no purple to it whatsoever, but I picked the darkest blue that I had. <laughs> so we're going to go with this one. Just to contrast it a little bit, make it more dark. Or more dark. Make it darker than the other ones. Because it just seems like there's a lot of different, you know, shades of blue in here. So... Eh, good enough, right? So, yeah, they'll probably sell their house really fast. Took me almost a year. <sighs> but I think that was because, well, my house wasn't terribly expensive, but it was up above what many of these houses are selling for. And like this here one, um, was, you know, lower than what my house was selling for. So this one was in bigger demand. There was a lot more people looking at this house and uh, then looking at mine. And again, I think people are looking so much for houses that are on the lower end rather than you know, three, four hundred thousand dollar houses. Now out in California, that's not on the upper end. <laughs> that's probably lower end for you guys. Uh sixteen green blue B714. B714. So we have quite a bit of sixteens in here. Just gonna start with these. So, yeah, I think, again, that's why mine took so long to sell. Plus, I did have some outdated things. I will admit it. I mean, it by no means was a, a new house. It was built in the 70s. So, I did have some paneling in the house yet, and people didn't like that. And, you know, some of the carpeting, especially in my bedroom, needed updating. The finished basement, a huge finished basement, but that needed updating carpeting also. And the downstairs, you know, the finished basement was all paneled, you know. And to stick all the money into update it in order to sell it, yeah, just wouldn't have been feasible. I wouldn't have came out any money ahead by sticking, gosh, probably you know, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars into it to update windows and heaven knows what else. So I I don't think I would have been any gosh, my head keeps getting in the way. Sorry. Um wouldn't have been any money I had. But I could have maybe sold the house faster. That would have been the only thing that would have been nice. So, oh well, I got less for the house than what I wanted. A little bit less than what I even paid for it. But, oh well, finally sold it. And this house is not ideal either, but 
we were getting kind of desperate to get a house because then I had sold that house and we had nowhere to go. Yeah, so we snapped up this one when it came on the market. Mm. All right, we'll just do these two and then we'll wrap things up. Yeah, this is looking pretty. Okay, these three things. <laughs> I do like this color. This is really throwing a nice contrasting color into all the blues and then these bright greens. I like all that pops and the yellows. It's pretty. All right. Let's zoom back out. Yeah. Isn't that looking pretty? Boy, these really do pop, don't they? And the yellows. Love it. Love it, love it. Not too keen on that color, that blue-purple or whatever. That was supposed to be a dark blue. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, well. It is what it is. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed our color in chat this weekend. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new to my channel. I hope everybody has had a fantastic weekend. And as always, happy coloring. Bye, guys.